This is Twit. So KDE has had an announcement this week that they're going to drop support for X11 in Plasma 6.8. Now we're currently on Plasma 6.5 and 6.6 should be released in February if, if the schedule holds. Now this means that X11 will be supported if you extrapolate out the suggested timelines into early 2027. Again, if the schedule holds, I mean, you know, that's just projected timelines. There could always be a shift in releases, you know, technical errors, whatever. But KDE has been fairly decent about holding pretty close to that. Uh, there's even talk that maybe they would support 6.7 a little longer with some X11 bug fixes and patches, but that's not been fully decided. So right now, early 2027 is the end of X11 on KDE. Now, if you really need to have X11, you know, they they suggest there are still long-term support releases, which you'll be able to run. And the example in the article they give is Alma Linux 9, which includes X11, and it'll be supported until 2032. So if you if you have X11 applicate and if you have app, X11 applications, they'll still wor work using X Wayland, and they're not removing that. They're only removing the ability to run on anything other than Wayland. So your favorite X11 application will still work. It's just running a compatibility layer, kind of like Wine does for Windows programs. You know, you can think of it that way. Accessibility is one area where Wayland is working hard to make sure there are no gaps. KDE says they're up to the X11 standards for accessibility features. But if you have third-party programs, the same can't be said. There's some third-party third application uh, accessibility apps that may or may not work. The article linked in the show notes does ask that if you have accessibility features that you need and it isn't already covered, let them know because they're very interested in improving this aspect of KDE. They want to make sure that KDE is accessible for everyone, no matter what uh, disability you might have. So, you know, if you if you see a gap, they, they definitely want to know. Uh, now, for those who don't know, Plasma 6. in Plasma 6.4, they split KWIN into two programs. They've got KWIN Wayland and KWIN X11. So it, it makes this split easier because what they'll do is they'll just stop including KWIN X11. So why are they doing it? So they're, they're saying that while split, splitting KWIN into two pieces helped development a lot, there's still many other areas of the desktop which are held back because of X11. So there's a lot of, you know, like the frameworks, for example, they there's just having to always include the X11 code that's causing them kind of some heartaches. So they say that dropping X11 will help them be more nimble and agile and save on resources as, as they have less back, less black ends they need to support. Now it's also uh, going to get harder and harder as more distributions keep dropping this. And yes, you have your LTSs, but they won't have the latest kernels and so as, as X11 kind of fades out through a lot of distributions, even testing this is going to become more of a challenge. You take a look at the first article in the show notes for more details, and you can see links to the reference documents and a lot more information on, on what's going on and why they're doing this and some behind the scenes stuff. Now I have a second article, which is talking about KDE 6.6, because, you know, we had a couple stories without Linux and I thought you guys need some more Linux news. So 6.6 .6 is coming. Uh, they're not at a feature freeze yet. So what I'm telling you here is kind of the foreshadowing what's coming, but there could be more because it's, it's about, I think it's mid January, if I remember correctly, when the feature freeze happens. Uh, there's, there's several things to look forward to though. You know, there's global actions going forward for going forwards or backwards five or 30 seconds in playing media. There does need to be support built into the app but a lot of them already support the API. It's now possible to configure order of the icons on the lock logout screen. There's more polish in the XDG portal dialogues. Uh, the screen and window chooser has been simplified and improved. The kicker application no longer quickly flashes. No match is found after you search for things, even if it did find something. If you have a QR code in the clipboard and it happens to be showing, and if you clear the clipboard, it will now also dismiss the QR code as well. It didn't previously. Uh, there are several other fixes, improvements, overall bug squash. So take a look at the second link in the show notes to see them. And 
as there were a ton I didn't cover for just the sake of brevity. And they even cover in their frameworks 6.21 fixes and changes. And they do mention that framework 621 is really going to start showing some of its feature set in 6.6. .6. So a lot of, a lot of good things coming. And I must say, you know, I'm continually impressed with the continuous improvements in KDE. They're really doing a lot of, a lot of code work. Yeah. So I, I remember, and you may as well, there was a blog post over on pointed stick from Nate Graham talking about when is Plasma going to lose the X11 session? I couldn't help but think about that. I went back and uh, I looked and he says, yes, it'll eventually happen at the time. There was no firm plan as to when. Um, this was July of this year, by the way. It wasn't actually that long ago. It was wow. like five months, six, five months ago. Yeah, like five months ago. He says, yes, the writing is on the wall. It'll eventually happen. Uh, but as for when Pl Plasma will drop support for X11, there's currently no firm timeline for this. I certainly don't expect it to happen in the next year. Mm. Well, it's happening in the next year, early in the next year even. Uh, certainly don't expect it to happen in the next two years, but that's just a guess. Depends upon how long everything works. Um, and then I want to say that they talked somewhere in here, you talked about 7.0, but I'm not sure. Uh, I can't find it at the moment. Um, maybe we just mused at the time that that meant that they were going to stay with X11 as long as they had the 6.6.x releases. Um, but anyway, I, all that to say, this happened a lot quicker than people expected. Even KDE people expected. Um, and I wonder why. Like, huh. there's the obvious reasons, um, and we've talked about here a time or two that. X11 is losing its few paid contributors. That may have a lot to do with this, actually. Um, Red Hat was employing some people that because they were still actively supporting uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux that shipped with X11, they were still paying some people to find and fix bugs in it. And that is, I think, no longer the case or is about to no longer be the case. That may have a lot to do with this. Um, but well, yeah, I think also as the feature if feature sets diverge, like HDR, it's not trivial to try to wedge HDR into X11. Yeah, and it becomes more and more of a burden to make the old code continue to work while you're right. adding new features. <clears throat> For sure. So I think it wouldn't surprise me. That's driving a lot of it, and with a lot of distributions at least hinting in the background, they're going to start dropping X11. I think I think it was just kind of like, hey, you know what? Let's get on this bandwagon too. And mm -hmm. there's the, just that much less that we have to support. Yep. yep. And like I Absolutely. said, it's going to get harder to test. Is a lot of distributions start going, okay, we're dropping dropping X. So okay, how do we test it? But we need the new kernel and new libraries, which a lot of this, you know, version whatever is going to need require to build off of. And mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, it's going to settle some debates about whether your distro should support it or not. You well, know, should, I, should should Fedora continue to have an X11 build of KDE? Nope, not after this. I don't know <laughs> if it uh, settles the debate if they should. <laughs> they may still say they shouldn't even after they go to it. But uh, yeah, well, it's it's amazing. Like when I saw this online, how many people was like, "Well, I guess I'm leaving KDE." It's like. I don't know. I I advocate for Wayland, maybe too harshly on the internet. I'm like that internet <laughs> guy who who <laughs> argues and just keeps jumping into the conversation, saying over and over. I really need to just copy and paste this because I say the same thing over and over, hundred times a week. But there's just so many reasons to move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what what will eventually have is it's the same thing like you you have some people that really don't like system d and so there are distros that are formed around this idea of i don't want system d i want to use one of the old uh init systems and that's fine like i have nothing against those just i don't want to run one of them but i have nothing against them existing yeah. it's like i have nothing against x11 code running out there um people just need to acknowledge that it's not actually being fixed there's not actually security vulnerabilities getting patched um and so 
Say run that at your own the risk. Niches. <laughs> well, what you know, I, niches and mainstream should <clears throat> you know do the right thing. Yeah, you know what what sold me on Whalen though was because, and I mentioned this before, the X eleven people that were working on it said we have to totally tear it down and rebuild this mm. to put these features and security in, and they're the ones that started Wayland. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember some of those early talks and stuff, and it kind of boiled down to a lot of people saying, well, you need to do this. And it's like, you don't understand the architecture. Mm -hmm. It is, it's such a convoluted mess. You can't, you know, it's a house of cards and you can't touch anything without breaking 20 others. Yeah. And Wayland was a result of that. And even if you're not a fan of Wayland, the people that were working at X11, that's who built it. And that's where they went. Nobody's, you know, everybody abandoned the X11 house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can't believe the developers of X11 and Wayland, who are you gonna believe? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the internet, <laughs> yes. and not me on the internet. Yeah, not not me on the internet. Yeah, uh, that's well. That's, even talked about it one time. X11 had its own printer driver and was halfway to becoming its own operating system. And they're like, "Oh my gosh, this is just we gotta stop." Yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, uh, Jonathan, I cut you off. No, no, I was just, I was thinking like, what was it? If you don't want to trust these guys, what was it before X11? Was it uh, the the old X windowing system before it was X11? Something like that. Yeah, it, it was it X86. Yeah, that's right. XF, XF86. <sighs> Yelp. Yeah. I see. I, I heard that. that you know what that sound was from Rob? <laughs> that was the sound of, I remember that, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> and there was, there was a lot of manually going in in the command line and editing files to yep. get a, yeah. a real grass graphical display going other than your basic that was the same monitor. sound that was the same sound that old ben kenobi said <laughs> yeah. obi-wan kenobi i have not heard that name for a very long it's the exact same sounds what rob just made <laughs> well the, the fact that it 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 started with x i i guess i didn't realize that it was something different but I definitely remember yeah. XF86 and the configurations. I just thought they made made it better and then changed the name a little bit. <laughs> it forked. It was a fork, yeah. Is that what it was? I, you know, yeah. I, I never... X386 forked into X.org. Yeah, um, okay. I'm trying to remember. I think X386 was a fork of something okay. else. So it's still kind of based on the same code. It's just forked and... Yeah. Yeah, okay. But yeah. Yeah, those are the, those are the fun now, days. Now that X now that <laughs> X eleven code is really forked. <laughs> if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out the Untitled Linux Show. You can find us in your favorite podcasting app or subscribe to our YouTube channel down in the links below. See you there.